Great job and congratulations on making it this far. Now we're gonna do a quick overview of what we've done in the earlier lessons. So we started out by creating our index.js. We brought in a bunch of different packages, predominantly Express and Twit and body parsers. So these were the three core packages that we needed to bring in in order to make our functionality within our application. We used Twit and got our developer keys from our a Twitter API and got those keys, placed them, the consumer keys, the access tokens into Twit so that we can establish our connection and authenticate our application. So basically what's gonna happen here is that Twit acts as that account that's attached to the developer account. So when we're doing these access tokens, we're acting as that user within the application. And then the consumer keys give us the ability to search within the Twitter API. We had some middleware we added in. So this was from Express so that we can set up our default local directory. So that's our static directory within public. We had a folder called public and then our index file, which was our front end page file within our application. So that static file is the index file, which whenever we go to localhost 3000, we actually see being displayed as our main index page. We also included body parser. So this was so that we could parse through content that's being submitted. So we could do URL encoded and JSON content. And then we had a couple routes that we set up. The first route that we set up was to search for different tweets. And what it's doing is it's getting the search parameter or the, whatever the value parameter there for search. And it's going and connecting to the twit object and then making a search within Twitter. So it's got all those authentication keys and that's all done in the background. What it does, we're able to set a few parameters. So we can do account, we can set the term that we're searching, the query value, and then we get a response data. And that data we're simply outputting in a JSON format into our route so that it can be made, so we can make use of it within our application. Next, we had a post where we can actually post our comments to our Twitter feed. And this is, again, using Twit where we do status as update and we send the information that we want to update. So it's status and we're sending over the comment and we're getting that from the post, the body comment information. Also, we set up our index. So we had some styling here to make our tweets look a little bit nicer. We had a form where we could get an input message and then post it to Twitter. So trigger that event, invoking a bunch of functions that sent Ajax requests to the backend routes of our node server. Uh, we also had an input for the search term where we could search for different terms. And then we had an output area. So something where we're actually outputting all of that data that's being retrieved from our routes. Set up a bunch of variables here to contain the objects, the element objects. Then we have our two event listeners for submit and click. And this is where we have our functions where all the magic happens. So if we're adding a comment, and in this instance, we used a regular HTTP request object in JavaScript, so nothing fancy there. We can actually get rid of our console logs as well. Posting it, we have to make sure that we're setting the content type as JSON formatted because we're sending it over as a JSON format and when we're stringifying it. So we're taking that object information from that input and sending it to our backend route. So that's over to comment and that's where we're picking that up. And then all we're doing with the response text. So what it does is it actually responds with that tweet object. So the same one that we're getting down here and all we're doing with it right now is we're outputting it into console. And you can always take this and do a whole lot more with it. You can get the ID and a bunch of information that's contained within the tweet object. Next, we had a function where we were using our fetch in order to connect to our route, return back the content as JSON data, and then sending that over to a function in order to process it and output it on the front end. You can get rid of these ones, the console logs. And first we, we built out, we created several different elements. We uh, got information contained within that response data 
from Twitter and we're getting the ID string, we're getting the actual tweet information, so that's item text. And then we were getting retweet count as well as the username. And we also saw there was just a ton of information. So you can really customize this as needed. And we see that whenever we open up our console here, we see there's just really just a whole bunch of information that's contained within these tweet objects. So you can make use of it, have some fun with it, and output it within your web page. And there's just a really a lot of data, and it's a really good practice exercise to go through this data and output it within your front end code because there are multiple levels here, and going through them will get you really familiar how to work with these large JSON objects that are multiple levels deep. So what we're doing, simply outputting whatever we're searching for and outputting these tweets. So we see we've got a number of tweets and then we're also linking out to those tweets so we can click and open those tweets up. So we've got two pieces of functionality within our application. We can post, we can search, and we know that within Twit, there's a whole bunch more that we can do. So now it's up to you. You can explore and build upon what we've created within the earlier lessons and extend functionality, extend what you're outputting for the different tweets, update the search functionality, and also try out some of the different options within Twit that you can post and connect to your Twitter account. And just also remember that this is also live within your Twitter account. So make sure that you're not posting too many things that you don't want visible. And as you can see, I'm just using a test account and it's always a good idea when you're practicing to use a test account, but this is also going to be your developer account. So always keep that in mind as well that whatever account you've set up the application under, this is also going to be the account that you can make use of, and it's also going to be the one that you're going to be using to post to. So keep that in mind when you are building out your applications. So have some fun with it. Try it out. Source code is also included so you can build upon and extend the functionality that we've produced within the lessons of this course.